Recently on Dragon Ball, we have just gotten latest information from the producer of Dragon Ball, Akio Ioku, talking about what we can expect from Dragon Ball within the next coming few years. Is there going to be big things coming for Dragon Ball? Let's talk about it. Yo, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to another video on the channel. I hope you guys are having an amazing day. We have gotten some crazy news here today regarding Dragon Ball. This is definitely the biggest news that we have probably gotten for Dragon Ball and since probably the Sparking Zero announcement. Uh, we've been getting a lot of Dragon Ball news as of recently, so that's been really good. It's refreshing to see that. 2023 was a little dull of a year. We were really, really left down and man they left us freaking starving last year <laughs> but we have something and this is a little bit more broad but it is something very big that is going to be happening with dragon ball from now until the next 10 years that's basically what it's saying that there's something that's going to be there's new things that are going to be happening with dragon ball for the next 10 years and this is really really huge because i don't know if you guys know this but dragon ball has really produced at a very slow rate that it would be on and off on what we would get and what would be produced and what would come out and that's just because the people that are producing and running dragon ball at least in our, in history have just been very lazy and they, they are basically like ancient muffreakers sitting behind a desk just producing things whenever they feel like it and that's not the way anime should be produced or at least an anime as popular as dragon ball but there's a lot to digest here we're going to go through this i'm going to break this down as simple as i can because there is a lot here and uh, I've seen a lot of misinformation online, not misinformation, but I've seen a lot of people taking what this is being, what, taking what's being said here the wrong way. Uh, and me personally, I hate it when Dragon Ball fans do that. Like, they, they have the tendency to really be stubborn and ignorant, and it's really crazy. <laughs> but I'm not going to take up too much of your time. This may be a little bit of a long video just because there's a lot of information here, but we're going to, we're going to work through this. All right, let's work through this. So, it says... This is an article. Shout out to Super Chronicles and Jupiter. I'm going to leave a link to both of them down in the description below. It'll be the first link in the description below. So make sure you guys give them a follow. But yes, it says Dragon Ball pushes the limits. Anime jumps to the world for the 40th anniversary. So if you don't know what this is, if you don't know what this is, they basically the executive producer now of Dragon Ball, Aikyo Ioku, uh, who is the president of Cap Capsule Corporation. I cannot talk. Damn it. Capsule Corporation Tokyo. Capsule Corporation Tokyo had just had a recent interview on the future of Dragon Ball. And it's very, very important that he announces during this year since this is the 40th anniversary of Dragon Ball. But it says for the 40th anniversary of Dragon Ball in 2024, the series will be received as a completely new anime. The immortal son, Go the, the immortal son Goku chooses the United States, not his home country, Japan, as a place to announce his return to the world. When Aikyo Yoku, the president of capsule corporation tokyo and the producer of the series dressed as sun goku announced the new anime at comic-con the world's largest pop culture convention in new york in october 2023 over 3,000 fans cheered now that's not necessarily true <laughs> i like how they say that over 3,000 fans cheered i guess you can say that it was very mixed for a lot of fans at least over media it was very mixed over fans calling it gt2 or just calling it a gt repeat i saw one comment on twitter where it was talking about this is dragon ball and the rugrats collab <laughs> It, it's funny it's humor i get it but it, it can be very ignorant at times and these are the same fans that are going to watch dragon ball daima anyway but i will agree on one thing that new york comic-con is absolutely the best place to announce things or at least at comic cons in general like san diego comic-con los angeles comic-con comic cons like that like big populated comic cons like that are very very good places to announce upcoming dragon ball or even upcoming anime of like updates or events or animes or anything like that or even games that is something that dragon ball has never really ever done in the past though they've been so secluded and so excluded to japan and, and it's and it's really weird because how many times in history have people in japan have gotten like for example the superhero movie right the superhero movie came out two months before it came out here in the states and like it, it's very very it's it's awful to say that because the way dragon ball has worked in terms of its production has been very very silly for a, a very very long time throughout its course of history and it's it, it hasn't helped dragon ball to grow a, as much as it should be growing and that's i think that's the main issue here that ikiyo yoku is trying to touch on but 
Uh, so continue on it says in the past overseas expansion of the anime was treated as an extra the original manga was published in book format became a hit and was then made okay so this is just talking about the past of it. it says overseas expansion was something that would always come later there was a time when dragon ball anime was sold overseas about a thousand dollars per episode that is insane i didn't even know that currently the idea is to expand the production to the rest of the world without separating domestic and overseas markets now this is amazing now now, I've seen so many people, and let me tell you, a lot of people saying that Aikyo Iyoku is a massive problem for Dragon Ball, and this is basically the exact opposite, because it's Aikyo Iyoku who has been pushing Dragon Ball as much as possible, because Aikyo Iyoku, more than anybody, more than even Toriyama, I would argue, that he has seen more potential in Dragon Ball than anybody, and that's just facts, that... Aikyo Ioku, starting Capsule Corporation Tokyo, has literally been his own, and he's the founder of it, he, that this has basically been his own project to basically produce Dragon Ball more, and that is absolutely huge for Dragon Ball, because Dragon Ball has been run by absolute freaking idiots, um, it's, it's, it's the truth, I'm sorry to say it, but Dragon Ball has been run for a very long time. It's been run by absolute morons who live in the in the dark ages that have no idea how to go about with production for Dragon Ball. And they're so, so, so stuck in the past when it comes to their production on this anime that they're not giving it the respect and the potential that it has to being as popular as it can be. It was only because of the huge domestic market that overseas expansion was not seen as a viable option after reaching a record of 6.53 million copies of Weekly Shonen Jump. Okay, so this here is just talking about numbers, so we can go here. The content market has been revolutionized by the rise of the streaming services. More than 1 billion viewers around the world consume works of the art regardless of the place and time. Unless we leap out of Japan where the market is limited like the Monkey King and fight our way across the globe, we will not be able to to get the best of the world the u.s has recognized the potential of japanese anime and is spending huge sums of money to acquire it the budget of pluto an anime based on Naka based on naoki urasawa's hopefully i'm saying that right novels that netflix began distributing on october 2023 is 300 million yen per episode 45 times the usual budget so if you don't know what this means this is basically saying that America has or the United States has been focused re has been Okay, so here's the best way I can explain it because this is hard to to like simplify it So basically what this means is is that Dragon Ball they talk about the Monkey King That's Luffy, but Dragon Ball has been doing a horrible job at being produced because they've been so isolated to Japan that they haven't been basically they've been very limited in terms of in terms of their marketing. So the way for example the Monkey King or One Piece for this instance has been growing is because they have been taking advantage of leaping out of Japan and producing themselves more in places like the United States or other places around the world. And that's something that Dragon Ball hasn't even been doing recently. And this is what Akiyu Yoku has been touching on. This is why Dragon Ball has okay. So for example, the reason why we were able to get Dragon Ball Super Broly is because Hi Ikea Yoku wanted that. He wanted Broly to come back. The reason why Gohan was featured in the Dragon Ball Super Broly or the Dragon Ball Super Superhero movie, sorry, was because Ikea Yoku pushed that. Point blank period. The reason why we're getting so much Dragon Ball content as of recently is because of Ikea Yoku, and that is something that we really have to thank Ikea Yoku for because he's the one who sees the potential in Dragon Ball, and he also sees the potential in the marketing and the production being better for Dragon Ball because it's been so horrible lately, and it's great that we see this because. Toei, Shueisha, and a lot of other people that have been running or in charge of Dragon Ball have been so lazy. It's re freaking ridiculous. <laughs> it's freaking ridiculous. The challenge is to make the leap to the next generation's industry. Many of the Japanese people grew up watching Son Goku, who became stronger and stronger by breaking through his limits every time he met a powerful enemy when faced with a difficult stip situation sorry son goku would say i'm getting pumped up let's enjoy facing new challenges and take on the world without fear of failure now if you look at this picture right here right now this basically is the picture uh, or a picture that is explaining the ranks of how popular dragon ball is in specific countries and india as you can see here is the most is the biggest country that has the most dragon ball fans and it's very very sad because if that's true the production in india in terms of how dragon ball gets 
produced there has been so awful and you can see how low it is here in japan it is so low in japan compared to a lot of these other countries like india spain the usa france south korea italy it is it is ranked where on the list it's ranked number seven i think it's on the list it says japan ranks 49th out of 53 countries in content market growth for this and this is so sad this really this really just shows how bad it's been <laughs> now what does this exactly mean for the future of dragon ball we're gonna be getting more we're gonna we're gonna get deeper into that okay so another tweet here from super chronicles again give this man a follow he says indomitable dragon ball inheriting the mission a global strategy to reach the new next generation okay blah 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 says dragon ball will celebrate its 40th anniversary in 2024 dragon ball is a unique and amazing work rather than okay we know this okay so right here as an executive producer of a work with unprecedented unpre longevity a mission is to expand and convey the or the original creator akira toriyama has created I will continue to produce works such as anime series. Listen, this is so important. I will continue to produce works such as anime series, movies, and games over the next 10 years. Adopting what is popular at the moment does not increase the probability of success. I will not be swayed by current trends, but will create works that I feel will be good enough. So what does this mean? Does this mean Dragon Ball is going to end in 10 years? No, that is not what it means. Does that mean we have to wait like six years for the super anime to come back? No, that's not what it means. Does that mean the super anime is going to be produced for at least 10 years? No, that's not what it means. So th this is very, he's saying anime series, movies, and games. Okay, so for the next 10 years, we can be expecting content around those three things. We can be expecting things. Does that mean Dragon Ball Daima is going to last 10 years? No. Does that mean Dragon Ball Super is going to last 10 years? No. That is not what any of that means. <laughs> First thing this means is that since Aikyo Iyoku is the executive producer of Dragon Ball, we can expect things for Dragon Ball to be produced a lot faster and a lot better. That is the first thing that we could say because Aikyo Iyoku has been very, very obsessed with the way dragon ball is produced and the rate in which dragon ball is produced and where dragon ball is produced that is the first thing the second thing is is that aikyo ioku is going to be in charge for at least 10 years we don't know exactly how long he's going to be in charge for but we can expect that he's going to be in charge for at least 10 years producing the anime series whether that's daima or super movies whether that's upcoming movies that we don't know about whether i don't know if they'll adapt moro into a movie or they'll adapt granola into a movie it purely depends i have no idea and games whether that's sparking zero xenovers kakarot any upcoming games we don't even know if sparking zero will have more in the future right we have no idea how much sparking zero will get updates and stuff like that we have no idea it's purely dependent on but what this is basically saying is that everything that happens now for Dragon Ball, the rate that it's produced, how it's produced, where it's produced, that's going to be happening by Aikyu Yoku for the next 10 years. Is that a good thing? Yes. It is absolutely 1 billion percent a good thing. When the craze had died down, there was a time when Dragon Ball craze, which had a spread around the world over 40 years, had died down. That That is... Holy crap, that is so true. <laughs> when I became the head of Shueisha's Dragon Ball Room in 2016, I could not visualize what was really happening. Seven to eight years ago, I went to a huge event in Brazil called CCXP. I was told that the Japanese anime were popular in South America, but there was a discrepancy from what I was told. The fee Feedback from fans was weak. It may have been at the peak of its popularity when it was on South Air in South America. That is 100% true as well. I also thought of it as a result of relying on old-fashioned zeal. Therefore, starting with the Dragon Ball Super Broly movie in 2018, we took steps such as actively participating in events. I felt concerned that Dragon Ball has not been expanded worldwide. Originally, we didn't see the strength and diffusion power of the work. We need to take a closer look at this and see if we can do more. We are not looking for a one-size-fits-all approach, but rather we are are looking for events such as the dragon ball world championships the expansion of games creating facilities and anything else that we can do we will work on them in parallel 
this is gorgeous. This is like music to my ears. This is like music to my ears. To see that Dragon Ball and to hear that Dragon Ball is finally going to be produced and expanded better worldwide is absolutely beautiful. Every Dragon Ball fan should be freaking celebrating right now because this is is literally beautiful it can be said that we are now able to do things that we had not even considered before from the beginning i began to think about the overseas expansion of dragon ball with dragon ball daima which will be released in fall 2024 we will be taking on the challenge of creating an anime series with a completely original story i am glad that all our works have been well received overseas now that's not true i don't think it's been well received overseas I, I think it's been very mixed but that's basically the point of dragon ball daima the point of dragon ball daima is to create and start an original story that is completely new and fresh for, for dragon ball at least diamond was announced at new york comic-con dragon ball series is recognized around the world it makes no sense to announce it somewhere dom domestic comic-con is a great place to announce your work people who understand the value of the culture and gathered there to begin with we chose comic-con because it, of its ability to spread our work throughout the world now the fact that they were able to show or announce or recognize that comic-con was the best place to announce something like this is absolutely amazing that, that that says something a lot because that is not how anything has been oh my gosh if you if you've been in the dragon ball community long enough and you've seen how things have been produced you will know that the fact that it was pro or, or announced at comic-con alone is so surprising Overseas expansion is currently being considered as a necessary means of spreading the word about the work. If we compare the flow of manga title selling in book format and then finally becoming anime to a river, the overseas developments were the ones that followed the river, meaning that in the past, it was a fan. Now, I want you guys to know this, that the reason why the manga sales for one piece have been so so huge is just because of the people who are producing and managing how it comes out that is literally one of the biggest reasons as to why one piece is so popular and dragon ball currently is it it's because of the production teams for one piece and the production teams for dragon ball are so different Be prior to Akiwi Yoku, the, pre the production teams for Dragon Ball have been anus, straight up balls and anus, it's been horrible, compared to One Piece, it's been so different, which is why One Piece is has a much bigger popularity right now that compared to Dragon Ball, when realistically, it should be very equal in terms of how popular both of these animes are. I'm convinced that Dragon Ball has pioneered many things as a Japanese anime, I have a sense of mission that if there is something that is that no one else has done, I must continue to challenge it. The industry is over competitive. It is tough to see the competition among anime due to the emergence of streaming sites. Competition has become excessive. We must not create a situation where a manga becomes anime and when the anime is over, the content ends as it is. The ideal situation is to create a situation where the average viewer sees the content. We are in a cycle of consumption and in some aspects, the cycle is becoming short lived. I don't think it's good at all to to have a boom that builds and then burns down which can be a factor in content not lasting long it will not be tough if we do not create it will be tough if it will be tough if we do not create a place to compete differently from in it will be tough if we do not create a place to compete differently from anime as content it is advisable for works that a that are popular now to be distributed simultaneously around the world to repeat generations and reach the next stage of popularity. In order to bring an overseas strength, a leading role is needed. In order for a producer to take on this role, they must transcend the boundaries of the corporate organization. There must be someone who has a bird's eye view of work as in a position to say, to each company, I think you should do this. I push myself to be a catalyst for through for this through various discussions. For Japanese content to continue, it is necessary to have someone who can say the status quo is not good enough. Akio Ioku is Dragon Ball Savior. 
we should all be kissing his freaking feet right now because I'm telling you right now, Dragon Ball would they probably. I'm convinced that for the 40th year of the the 40th anniversary of Dragon Ball would have been looking a lot different if Kai if Aikyo Ioku was never involved from the start. I am very very convinced of that. You can see right here, executive producer of Dragon Ball. This is beautiful. This is beautiful. Literally, this is beautiful. This is good news for Dragon Ball. For the next 10 years, we can expect Dragon Ball to be a lot bigger. Hopefully, we can be expecting Dragon Ball to be producing at a much bigger rate. From the way Aikyo Ioku has worked in the past, that is most probably what is going to be happening. Dragon Ball is going to be is going to be produced at a much better at a much higher rate and that is beautiful for us dragon ball fans god bless aikyo ioku he is amazing for this let me know what all of you guys think about all of this down in the comment section below let me know if you guys have any questions about this down in the comment section below i will read through it as much as i can and i will answer them as best as my ability i will leave a few videos that i recommend you guys watch as well as a good insight and people who can basically explain this a lot better than i can a lot of the things that i said here was secondhand information but anyways let me know what you guys think about all this down in the comment section below i'll see you guys later stay safe and peace out Hey, it's me, Goku! If you're new to the channel, don't be afraid to hit a like and subscribe button so you can be updated for all the new content PBL Gaming makes! See ya!